Good morning, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the journey back from domestic violence. I'm your girl, Arthur Erica. Happy Saturday to all my people out there. Um, today I have a good friend of mine that I met on Instagram. Her name is Ty, and today she's gonna um basically tell her story of her situation. So, Ty, thanks for joining us. Thanks for um giving allowing the journey back from domestic violence to air your um. Uh, give your story, you know, giving your story that platform because we have other women, as you know, we all in a pandemic and we have some women that still dealing with domestic violence and they may be sitting down wondering how they can get out of what's going on and you might have some little tips inside your story. So we're going to give you that opportunity to share your story. So first of all, we're going to start just to say thank you again. And when did it, when did domestic violence start for you? um for me okay i was in a relationship for 10 years and it started maybe like the second year okay what's well, us about it um so basically like the first encounter i had um like he like kind of dragged me out of the car but i was like no 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 you know i don't know my mind in love right um so i like fought against it you know and like eventually like the the things that was happening like built up more and more it got more crazy like i was burnt in the back with cigarettes i had like knives put to my throat um he told me if i ever left him he would kill me like he done put bleach in my gas tank for me and the kids couldn't go nowhere he done threw my car keys hid my car keys like just extreme like things and i still that's i guess it still wasn't enough for me you know it, my mom always told me like when a woman get tired she get tired and you gonna know you know so i guess i wasn't tired so it went on for eight more years it went on but it was like on and off like i would try to break off break it off with him and then he would be like oh i found jesus and i'm sorry and then i was like all right let's try it again you know um so eventually like i married the man and it just it just was hell from there like it never went to be anything um good we our marriage only lasted um like maybe a year and a half before I was just like, okay, that's it. Like I can't, I can't do it no more. And it was cause of freaking COVID that I was like, really was like, okay, what the hell are you doing? Get it together. And then in the process of it, like I had like, uh, throughout the, the 10 years, like I got, I got four daughters right now, but I had finally got pregnant with a boy and then I had a miscarriage. Um, and then like one of my favorite rappers, Nipsey had like shortly died right after that. And I was like, damn, like, what am I like? What is life right now? You know, I was so depressed. I was like, I was basically killing myself, like in the bed, crying, like losing hella weight. Like, it was just crazy. Um, and then I was praying to God, like, what's my purpose? What I'm supposed to do? Like, help me, like, tell me what to do. And then that's when I found, because um, I do braids. So I found the, the shop that I'm at right now. I found her and we clicked like instantly and i just knew like okay this is what it's gonna be like this is it right here um and then like COVID struck and then i was in the house with him for maybe like it wasn't really that long maybe like three or four months maybe mm -hmm. um and i started like getting closer to god because the abuse didn't like it didn't stop like i was in and out the hospital I was really, really sick all the time. Um, and then it got to the point to where like my older two kids would have to like run in the room and like like get in the middle and like 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 a shield around me, like get away from my mom. And I was like, this is crazy. So then I started doing Bible study with my kids every morning. Um, we started reading and then it I didn't know where to start in the Bible. I never do. Mm -hmm. right. so I just picked it up like, okay, God lead me. And he just started telling me things about the relationship and was telling me like, you're not supposed to be here. And I was just like, dang, I'm getting chills. Um, you're not supposed to be here. And I'm just like, damn, like, and I was always so scared. Like I was always yeah. so scared to just like leave because all the threats, all the abuse, I was like, how do I, how? And when God started telling me, like when it started being broken down to me, I was just like, okay, 
I'm not gonna be scared if I die like I died pretty much is how I felt um and I was like this is it like I can't do it no more and I told him and I had the conversation and I told him like well we can like still like stay in the same household that way the kids have both of us because I knew like once he left he wasn't gonna help me or nothing you know mm -hmm. and so I was like, they can have both of us and he wasn't okay with that he still wanted to have sex and i would tell him no he would get mad he would flip the bed over like wow. it was just crazy like, i'm trying to sleep like he'll snatch the covers off like just crazy stuff and um eventually like he got i guess he got tired of like trying to force me to do things he wanted me to do and i, I would like rebel against him so he finally like packed his stuff and he finally left and um it left me being a single mom he didn't he didn't help he still don't help um um so once he left like maybe two to no like three months went by once he left my uncle had moved in with me um to like help me he needed some help too so we was kind of helping each other <laughs> and um, the their dad he wasn't helping he didn't call he didn't text he didn't come by to see him nothing um uh, so he finally was like okay let me uh come see them and i'm like yeah sure like you know he was supposed to keep them for a week um he picked them up on a sunday he my uncle didn't have a car he my uncle took my car to the store they pulled up at the same time and he like called me like bro like who is this nigga driving your car like what are you doing like and i'm mm -hmm. like bro like you can't ask me nothing like we're not even like nah you you tripping so i was thankful that my uncle was here because it would have got abusive right mm -hmm. so um my uncle he came in the house i'm like uncle like this dude asking me like who this nigga is driving my car so my uncle turned around he walked back out the door and he like he went downstairs and he was like what's up bro i'm her uncle you want to know like who's driving her car what's up and he like no 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 like he flipped the script or whatever Sorry. and yeah he flipped the script and then my uncle was like bro like i heard about you like because my uncle already knew the stuff that he was doing but my uncle he was incarcerated for like 15 years so the whole time it was happening to me my uncle he wasn't around um when i was young my uncle he was like my dad because my dad wasn't around uh so my uncle told him like dude like i heard about you and I'm like, Uncle, come on, let's just go get the car seat or whatever. Like, I don't want to cause a scene, you know? And so um, he was like, no, nah, no, nah, it's cool, it's cool, whatever. And he left without the car seat or whatever. And I was like, okay, whatever. My uncle's like, he a buster, he a buster, whatever. I'm like, okay, like, uh, clearly he is, you know? And so I'm like, all right, I'll see you at the work or whatever. So I head to the shop. Uh, I, he called me while I'm like almost at work cussing me out, bitch, you got niggas around my kids, like you disrespectful ass bitch, whole time my kids in the back seat, cause my daughter told me like, mom, we was right there like when he was doing that, you know, and so I was like, um, I was like, like, I don't owe you nothing, like, and I hung up the phone, and so, um, I didn't talk to him for, well, I called and checked on my kids that day, and then the next day, and then the that following day, it was Tuesday. So Tuesday, um, his sister came to my house before I was while, while I was getting ready for work, and she gave um, custody papers to my uncle. And I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, but I kind of expected it. Like, I kind of knew. Like, when he seen my uncle, like it was gonna trigger something. Like, I already knew. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "I'm like, I didn't expect it to happen so soon." I didn't think that it would happen exactly how it happened, but it did, you know, everything happens the way God wanted it to happen. And so I kind of wasn't tripping. I was like, okay, whatever. So my uncle gave me the papers and then I was just like, um, I was just like, whatever. So I, I, I went to work and then I was looking over the papers and I seen that we had court the next day because he had filed for like an emergency hearing. Right. Like it was an emergency hearing. <laughs> so um, I went to court the next day I mean, no, 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 back up, back up, back up. Okay, so I seen we have court the next day. So I remember finishing on my last client this day. I was getting ready to dip her hair and her mom was there. And uh, I got a phone call and the phone call was from one of his other sisters. Me and his, one of his sisters is like really, really close. Her daughter is my goddaughter. So she called me and she was like, Ty, and I'm like, 
yeah, what's up? Like, like she just sound like sad. Like, and her right. voice was kind of like shaky, crackling. And I'm like, what's up? Like, she was like, you by yourself? I'm like, yeah. She like, I got to like tell you something. Like, you probably should sit down. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't need to sit down. Like, everything good. Like, I don't need to sit down. And then she was like, bro, like, okay. So she was like, her, her boyfriend's grandma had walked in her mom's house. And I'm like, bro, what are you trying to say? Like, what you say what you say? <laughs> and she was like, sis, like, I can't even tell you. Like, she stopped at the grandma walked in the house. I'm thinking she's going to tell me, like, she, she, he was cheating or something. Like, and so she's like, I can't even look my stomach. I'm going to say to my stomach. Um, she, oh, God. Um, she couldn't even tell me. So she gave the phone to the her sister-in-law, so her boyfriend's sister. And the boyfriend sister ended up telling me that, um, damn. The boyfriend sister ended up telling me that the grandma walked in on, oh my God. Um, the grandma walked in on him molesting my daughter. Um, so wow. I immediately, yeah, like I immediately like left work um, to go get my kids, but I knew not to go by myself, right? What? Because of all the past things that was happening. What? Um, so my sister ended up being at my house because she had came to get her hair done that day. So she was at my house and, um, I called her and I told her like what I had just heard. And she was like, come pick me up. So I went home first to pick up my sister. And then I called my uncle while I was on my way there and to pick up my sister. And my uncle was like, all right, like, I'm going to meet you there. And then I had a cousin that stayed, like, locally, too. Uh -huh. And my uncle picked him up. So we all went over there. Uh, I remember it being the – it was right before the 4th of July. So they was outside, like, popping fireworks. Like, my oldest daughter, she was in the, in the street. And she was lighting a firework when I pulled up, but I like I turned around like bust you turn in the middle of the street, right. and everything over. And so like me and my sister, we just hopped out the car, like we just hopped out the car, start snatching up kids as we seen them, like. And the the description that the girl gave me on the phone, I knew who she was, what child she was already talking about because I know right. how I sent my kids, right? My daughter mm -hmm. had two puffballs hair so i knew that it was my youngest daughter at the time she was three um wow someone I, yeah she was three so right now she's four she just turned four uh at this time she was three so when i pulled up she still had those two puff balls in her hair and she, the girl said she had a dress on my daughter had on a dress and two puff balls still and i was just like when they told me it had happened two uh, two hours prior to them telling me, the police had came out and all that, but I didn't know nothing. I'm just at work. Nobody. Right. Nobody's like, not saying nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody not saying nothing. So I pull up. We start snatching kids. My seven year old, she a real daddy's girl. He can't do no wrong in her eyes. So she ran back in the house, and my sister tried like run after her to grab her, but they was like his family was weird. They was like lock the door, lock the door. So they locked the door and locked my daughter in the house, and we had to like physically like snatch my three-year-old out of his hands because he was holding her and we had to literally like grab her and he was like holding on to her leg and we, i had to like pull up like pull them apart and then um once we got them in the car or whatever we got them in the car well my oldest daughter my two older ones and then my three-year-old we they yeah. were in the car i locked the door i gave my oldest daughter the phone i said if anything happened just call the police so um i locked them in the car or whatever and I'm still trying to get my seven-year-old daughter, but the door is locked. So he right there. And I'm like, my nigga, like, you touching on my kids. Like, I was going off on him. Right. So then my uncle came up around me, and they start fighting. They start right. fighting. They start fighting. His sister tried to get it. His sister is a, uh, she a stud. So she feel like she a nigga. So she tried to, like, walk up. And she kind of got in the way, and she kind of got knocked down. I don't know if she got hit. I don't know if she got pushed. Like, I don't know. It was just so much happening so mm -hmm. fast. Um, so she kind of like hit the floor or whatever. And I was like, let him fight. Like, nah, let him fight. Like he could fight me. He could beat on me. Nah, let him fight. Let him fight. Oh man. Yes. 
Yeah, like, and, and my uncle, he big. You know, people that come out of jail, they huge. Yes, so, indeed. <laughs> so he kind of he kind of was scared. That's why he was like, nah, he didn't want to get that car seat. He like, nah. But when he got around his family, he tried to act like. He whole. Yeah. 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 Like, and my, they end up fighting it. Do start running in the street, talking about, I'm about that, I'm about that. I said, nigga, you're a bitch. You're not about nothing. You're not right. about nothing. So his sister, his sister go to her car, get a gun, start pointing it at me and my kids, telling us, I ain't afraid to shoot shit up. And I'm like, my nigga, you gonna have to shoot me. That's, you're gonna have to shoot me. Like, I don't care. So uh, we get in the car, we leave. Well, when she put the gun out, my oldest daughter called the police like, they got a gun, they got a gun. So um, I pull up the street and I'm waiting for the police and the police um, end up coming and I kind of like drove past the house instead of like stopping directly in it. I kind of drove right. past the house and the police start chasing me. They start chasing me down the street. And they had the helicopters on me. Me and my kids in the car, they got the helicopters on me, like, telling me to stop, pull over, all type of stuff. And I ain't, I seen this in the movie. I ain't never seen this in real life. And right. I'm like, what? <laughs> me? Like, what? What? And so, like, I pull over or whatever. They got their guns out. They, like, get out slow. Like, it was crazy. I was so fucking scared. And then I'm like, okay, black people been getting shot, like, crazy recently. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I'm terrified as fuck. Like, my kids in the car, all of them, I'm just like, damn, this is crazy. So we kind of, like, trying to, and I'm telling my kids, like, please, y'all, don't make no fucking moves. They will shoot right. us. Like, just yeah, uh -huh. No sudden moves. For real, don't move. So we got our hands out the window. He like, all right, driver, get out. And I was the driver, so. I got out. He like, hurry up, put me in here because he was real aggressive. I'm like, and I'm yelling at them like, bro, like we call y'all. Like, how you, how you over here? And they the ones with the fucking gun trying to shoot me. Like, and they was like, he was like, man, ma'am, we gonna talk about all that. Like, what, like he was he was aggressive. He was aggressive. So he ended up doing the same thing to my sister and then my cousin because my cousin had hopped in a car with me because my uncle had already left. So it was me, my sister, my uncle. I mean, me, my sister, my cousin, and my kids. And so he made us all get out, the older ones, and then the kids stayed in the car. He and I'm telling them, like, bro, like, I called y'all. Like, they the ones put a gun out on us. And they that's when the officer was like, well, they said that y'all had a gun. And they tore my whole car up, ripped the uh -huh. seats out, all in the middle of the street, all in the middle of the street. Kids right there on the sidewalk, it's cold as fuck, and ripped the whole car apart and didn't find nothing and i'm like bro i told y'all like it wasn't me like I, we called y'all right. like don't you get and he was like well there was another car a, a getaway driver i'm like this ain't making no sense to me right now so they was like all right we could go but then a police truck ended up coming and turning around it kind of stayed back at a distance a little bit uh -huh. and um they told us to line up in a row they had me, my sister, and my cousin lined up in a row. Come to find out, my ex was in the police car, uh, like saying who did what, basically. Wow. Yeah, he was snitching. He was snitching. So they end up they but then he came and he said that my cousin had the gun or whatever, but he didn't. My cousin didn't have no gun. So they end up taking my cousin to jail that night. They end up taking my cousin to jail that night. And I'm like, damn, bro, like, what the fuck, right? And so I I went at the police station kind of waiting for my cousin. I'm like, damn, he wouldn't even be in this situation if he wasn't coming to defend me. So we kind of went to the police station, sat around for a couple of hours, and they ended up saying that they was going to take him to West Valley. So I'm like, damn, like, y'all, he really finna go to jail. Like, I'm really pissed off. And so, um, I ended up, I told my cousin, baby mama, or whatever. So she was like communicating back and forth. So we ended up leaving the police station and going back home. When I pull up to my house, this dude is parked across the street from my house with his whole family. What? And, yes, parked across my street with his whole family. And I'm trying to, I was like, I, I pulled up. Okay, so when you come to my house, you got to go up the street and you turn left right? Mm -hmm. But you could turn left or you could turn right. He was parked to the right where he, he'd he be able to see if I came and made a left. Right. And then he had his sister parked up a little bit past the street. 
So I turn left and I'm I when I I'm already watching my surroundings. So I turn left and I'm looking. I'm like, damn, that look like his car, bro. And so I pull because when I park, I park in the, it's an alley behind my house where the the what is the things called the like the parking structure thing is. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so I kind of turn and I I stop and I look. And then I seen the lights come on, and then I back up, and I turn around to go back out. Uh And he started driving his car, like, to, like, ram me. So I was, like, swerving. Kids in the car, I'm telling you, I cannot make this shit up. He, I'm, like, swerving, and I call the police, like, this dude is crazy. Like, so I drive to the police station, told the police what happened. Tell me why this dude showed up at the police station. I don't know where the hell he came from. He showed up at the police station. He waving these damn papers around that he just got from court this day, that day. And he don't got no custody. Like he just waving it around like he got right. custody. You don't got shit. Like we just have a court date. So the police pretty much told him, like, bro, you might as well go home. Ain't nothing. We not finna give kids to you. She ain't finna give up kids. Like none of that finna happen. You got court, you might as well deal with it that way. Right. So I end up going home like this shit was crazy. So I, I ended up going home and then um, the next day I had court. So pretty much when we, when we went to court, the judge didn't even hear like a case or nothing because it, he felt like there was no emergency. Like he made the decision while we were still sitting in the hallway. And I was like, hell no, nah, because my seven-year-old was still over there with him. Like I right. never got mm-hmm. her back after all this. I never got her back. And so... um. I was like, nah, like that. Don't, I'm not finna, nah. So I sat at the courthouse all day. I talked to supervisors, everybody I could talk to. And one lady, she, um, she helped me fill out the paperwork. I told her what happened, and she helped me fill out the paperwork. I wrote the declaration, and she, before the judge even approved me to have full custody at that time, she was, she texted me. She was like, congratulations, like you, you must have did a really good job on your declaration because the the judge granted your orders. And I'm like, fuck yeah, like I was so excited. Why? So I went, I went to the police, I went to the police station, and, they, and I told them like, I got a court order. This dude got my daughter. They say I'm supposed to have her. Like I need y'all to go over there and get her. And so they was like, all right, just stay parked in a close location. And so I parked down by the grocery store that was close to his mom's house in the parking lot. I waited for the police for four fucking hours. What? Four four hours I waited. So the police finally came and I told them I didn't go with them. I had to stay in the parking lot. Um they went over there then they said, Oh, he's not he's not giving the, the girl back. He's saying that she's not here. I'm like, my nigga, she is there. Where else is she going to be? She exactly. is in there. Y'all need to go in there and get my daughter. Like, I'm telling y'all this man is a child molester, and y'all not going to get my daughter. Like, I understand. And he was like, well, we can't just go in the house. What are you talking about? You're the police. You're the police. <laughs> exactly. The police. And, and you have the, the piece of paper. Like, you have the paper that say that I'm supposed to have her. So pretty much that night, I didn't get my daughter. So I had to wake up early and go to the police station the next day. I went to the police station the next day. The officer that I talked to this time, he was like, man, we finna get your daughter. So we went, he was like, drive behind me and park right behind me when we get there. So I followed him all the way to the house and parked behind him, but I sat in the car. And the officer, the, this officer, he was on it. He was like, you, she supposed to have her, like you're violating the order. Like he was on it. And dude still was like, nope, nope, I don't got her. Nope, she ain't here. She ain't here. He refused to get my daughter back. He still didn't want to give her back. And I'm like, at this point, I'm getting pissed off. So the police, right. he like, man, just calm down. I'm going to get your daughter back. Just calm down. And I'm like, man, like, y'all done gave him a chance to, like, run, like, send my daughter off somewhere. Like, right, exactly. Man, she not here. Like, y'all, what is y'all doing? Y'all not doing y'all jobs, bro. Like, I don't know where the fuck my daughter is. Like, this is crazy to me. So I ended up, he ended up telling me to leave and he going to call me with an update. So I left. And then maybe like two hours later, maybe like an hour, maybe like an hour, he called me and he was like, meet me at the police station at 12. I'll have your daughter there. He said he's going to drop her off. So I got there at 12 and my daughter was sitting in the lobby. And um, we it, shit, it just went from there. And ever since then, I've been going back and forth to court. I got full custody over my kids now. And I got a restraining order for all of us, which is great. But when the judge made the orders, 
um, we weren't in court. He heard our he heard our our story. The witness that seen, the lady that seen him doing that to my daughter, um, she testified. So we had like a whole like trial, and the judge like ruled in like me having full custody and him only That's having good. supervised visits. Him only having supervised visits. So when he he mailed us out the the what was the court order. So he didn't give it to us right then. He mailed it to us. And when I got it, I cried. I was so happy. And shortly after, the dude filed some more stuff for me to, he trying to get full custody. He's still fighting me. What's the okay? so you're not going to win? Yeah, you're not going to win. So Was he convicted on, um, on rape charge of your three year Nope, the police don't want to pick up the case, they said. They said there is not enough evidence. I'm like, what more evidence? You have a witness. A witness and my three-year-old daughter told me when I got my daughter back that night, I asked my daughter, I said, baby, mama need to talk to you about something. And she was like, well, mommy, I was like, uh, has anybody like ever touched you? I didn't say dad. I didn't say nothing. I just said, has anybody ever touched you? She said, yeah. I said, who like who touched you and she was like my dad and i was like where and she pointed to her vagina now at the time my mom was on the phone so my mom heard the whole conversation and i couldn't do nothing but hug her because i wanted to ask her right when i got her back so it was still fresh in her memory like if you ask her now she don't even she don't remember to do like she she thinks she don't got no daddy pretty much she don't even remember um so my daughter, she even told me, my daughter and the, the, the lady that seen it, and that's still not enough. Wow. So let me ask you this. We're going to go back a little bit. When y'all first started dating, how was that when you first started dating him? You know, how was that? Was that romantic or did it start off abusive? How was that when y'all first started him? It was, it, it was romantic. He was sweet. Like, we was always with each other. Um. He was just like a cool guy. Like he didn't, I didn't see any like craziness at all. Like he would pick me up from work. We would go eat. Like, you know, the typical like Got dating mm -hmm. stuff. So when did this change? Like what, it did it change exactly when y'all got married? Or y'all was in a relationship before y'all got married? Yeah, we was in a relationship before we got married. We was in a relationship for maybe like, dang. We was in a relationship for like six years. Wow. So what like was the first? Six years before we got married. Before we got married, we was in a relationship for six years. So when was the first incident? Can you remember? The first incident, like when he really started putting his hands on me, it was when I moved in with him and his family. Um, I can't remember exactly what the exact incident was. But I know that it got really bad when I moved in with them. Um, I can't rem I can't remember exactly what happened. I just know there was a number of different things that was taking place. So I think like over time, like it's just like flashbacks of like what happened. I think, and then I I'm in therapy right now too. So my therapist told me like when trauma is happening like your mind block out a lot of stuff to yes, not remember it because mm -hmm. I, I told her like like why can't I remember certain stuff and she was like it's because your mind naturally start blocking stuff blocking out up. because everything mm -hmm. going through so I, I I can't really tell you the the first first encounter mm -hmm. but I could tell you what happened to me I could tell you different examples of like what happened but I can't distinguish what was first and what was give us some examples of what happened that that you can remember um I remember like there was this one time that um like he got mad at me for whatever reason I don't know and um he was trying to like rip like it was a house full of people he was trying to like rip my clothes off and he was calling me hoes and bitches and trying to like strip me naked in front of everybody and I'm like holding my pants and my shirt like screaming like no like and everybody just sitting there watching nobody stopping in nobody doing shit like everybody just sitting there just letting them happen like 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 letting it happen I'm just like this is crazy but I was already so like I think I was already numb so I was already like like 
used to all the abuse that was happening. Um, I remember one time I got mad because I told, like, he asked some girl for some money or something. And I got mad. Like, why are you asking another girl for money? Like, right. I don't understand. So at this time I was pregnant. He, I was eating some noodles and he took the noodles and he dumped them on me, like poured them. They was burning hot, dumped them on me. And so his grandma, she gave me like a bowl of like chili beans because he like did that. And he took that and he dumped it on me. And like, Greg, he ripped my, I had a bald spot like right here for a long time because he like ripped my hair from my scalp. Mm -hmm. Like, hair from my scalp. Um, his mom, he said, I'm finna stab this bitch. I'm finna stab this bitch. And his mom was like, well, if you stab her, you the one gonna be in jail. He was like, I don't give a fuck about jail. He went and got a knife. I left the house. I ran up the street. Like, right. gone. I was gone. But, like, nobody ever tried to, like, help the situation. They kind of, like, I feel like kind of condoned it. Like, it yeah, was. They it able was. him. Mm -hmm. So, and, did, uh, you, did um anybody on your side of the family knew about what was going on? My mom did, but my mom never said, you can come stay here. Like, she never told me, like, I could come there. Like, I didn't have, all my family is, like, in L.A. and they, like, my family ain't, ain't no stable family. So, everybody just everywhere. Right. And they, they, it, it's a lot of shit that goes on. So, I mean, the oh, only person it was like I you could, really didn't have support, but, but that family, but, his side of the family anyway, and it wasn't doing much. So when did yeah. it when did it get to the point where you say enough is enough and I'm leaving or he left? Did you say he left during the pandemic, correct? Yeah. Yeah, he left. So um last year. Last year I said, okay, this is it. And it's it's because like I said, I was reading the Bible more and I started mm -hmm. like getting yeah, with like my spirituality and I actually start being able to like hear God speak to me and so when he was revealing things to me I was like mind blown I'm like he's talking to me there's no reason that I mean there's it, it, it he has to be talking to me like this is not by coincidence like it's speaking on my situation and so that's when I just I told him like bro like this not gonna work like we gonna have to get a divorce. I was like, we could we could stay in the same household until after COVID. You know right. that way, cause that's when COVID was really like in the beginning, and it was like you can't just be out in the streets. And right. I I never wanted to take my kids out, so he ended up he 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 was he, at first he was with it, but when he would try to like have sex and still act like we in a relationship, mm -hmm. he started getting fucked. That because he didn't have that control no more. No. Mm -hmm. I, like I'm not scared no more. It is what it is. Like, and it's been a couple times when I, even after I told him like I'm cool, like he done beat me up. But I it just it it was what it was. I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared to speak my mind. I wasn't scared to do what I wanted to do. I wasn't scared to wear what I wanted to wear because he didn't want me to wear certain shit. I couldn't wear my hair a certain way. I couldn't talk to people. If I got too close to people, he would fuck me up. He would fuck, he would go off on me. Like it was just bad. Like he used to accuse me of like sleeping with his brother and his sisters. And he would tell me I'm on some lesbian shit. Like it was just crazy. Like, what are we even talking about? Right. <laughs> so <laughs> doing this time. So after all this, and now that it's just you and your kids huh, now, and where where are you now today? Are you going to therapy? How are you getting through this transition of leaving this relationship? And did you get married or divorced? Um, okay, so we're divorced. So we're divorced, which is great. Thank you, Jesus. Um, right now I'm still going through court, the court process, because like I said, he fought the court orders. And it's so ironic because the the judge that was hearing the case at first retired when we, by the time we were supposed to go back to court um last was it last month yeah april 16th is it april right this ain't may yet okay so april, still 16th. April. <laughs> <laughs> april 16th i went to court and i learned that the judge had retired so now there's another judge so we gotta rehear the whole case all over again mm -hmm. and the group my ex filed an appeal 
So now we have to wait and to see what happens with the appeal because he was fighting against what the last orders were. Mm -hmm. So now it's it's a long process. Um, right now I'm still dealing with harassment. I'm still dealing with um, crazy stuff. Like I was talking to this one dude and my ex made a fake account on Instagram to send him a message and tell him how like, I'm I'm of all things evil and that um I barely just came up a year ago. Like he was wow. just talking in the message and I'm like, this is funny. At this point it's funny. So how how are you doing with therapy? How is that working with um for you? It's great. Like if it wasn't for therapy, I don't know where I would be, honestly. And then too, like my, the person that I Remember the shop that I work at? So the the owner there, like, we like best friends. Like, that's really my sister. She helped me through, like, so much of it. Like, when I would be at work and I would just break down, like, I would have to walk away from my client and I would just be crying. Like, she'd be right there, like, helping me through it, talking me through it. So I'm grateful that I have her, too, because before therapy, she was, like, my therapist. Sure, <laughs> she was, yeah. like, my therapist. <laughs> So it helped a lot being able to speak about it. And then for a long time, like my family, they don't believe in like the whole like therapy thing. I'm the first As person. As user in black it. families, yeah. Exactly. So I'm the first person that actually like went to like going through therapy, going through therapy. And then like my mom, like when I started telling my story little by little on Instagram, like she kind of got like upset with me. Like, why are you at this point? You're just telling people your business. And I'm like, mom, it's not about telling my, my business because I'm not looking at it. How you looking at it? Like I can save somebody else. Like exactly. what are you talking about? So we kind of got into it or whatever and was arguing about it or whatever. But I was just like, whatever, bro. Like I don't even care because God told me to tell my story. At first I was just writing it like under a, like a picture or something, I would mm -hmm. tell a, a piece of, but then like after I was like, I need to document it. I need to make videos. This would voice be it. Like, you better. need to voice it. Yeah. So then I started, that's when I started making the different series on, um, on TikTok and posting them to Instagram. Cause TikTok is hating because they keep muting my videos. Like why are y'all muting my Mute videos? <laughs> You know, it's um it's important that we share it. And, you know, I guess because our mamas come from different eras, they feel like whatever happens in your house, it stays that. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have so many women that's gone through these situations. Whereas we have me and you, we got out of those situations. We're able to talk about it now. So it's important that we voice our voice what's going on and get help for the next person. My situation can save somebody. Your situation can save somebody. So we just never know. So that's why it's important that we not be silenced no more, you know. So what what are what are what's the future looking like for Ty now? Are you um are you open to dating? Are you just gonna leave that for a while and just keep working on self? No, girl, I want a man. I want a man. <laughs> I do. I want to be in a relationship. I, I learned that, like, I'm not, I know there's women that are able to just be single and be happy being single. But for me, like, I love love, like, and I'm not afraid to love somebody else because of what happened to me. I know how to properly love somebody. So I'm, I'm waiting for the right person to come around. Cause I have spoke to a few different people, but I mean, it didn't go nowhere, you know, but I'm at a point to where I'm not about to just sit around and just tolerate stuff. Like if I see something that I don't like, then I'm not going, I'm not going for it because I don't want to end up back in the same situation that I was already in, right. you know? Gotcha. So are you looking at um, working with any organizations um, for domestic violence and keep speaking out about what's going on or what? Yeah, I for sure, I haven't thought as far as organizations, but I for sure want to speak about it. I for sure want to save people, uh, men too, because men go through it with women. Yes, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. So I want to go, I, I want to, I definitely want to um, keep speaking about it. I want to save women, men, children, because there are young kids that go through it. Uh, and then too, like from the perspective of like how my kids felt too, having to see their mom like go through it and it caused a lot of like um i want to say like damage to my oldest daughter right um, mm -hmm. she's 
it caused a lot of damage to her. We had her when we was young. So she, that is her dad too. But when we went to court, he, he denied her and said she wasn't his daughter and stuff like that because he he wants the younger one so he can manipulate and do what he want to do with her. Exactly. You know, so he, he pretty much said she wasn't his daughter and it's a lot of trauma that he caused to her as well. So I do want to incorporate like her in like the journey and her telling her side um, so I plan on taking this very far. I plan on saving a lot of people. Some people I'll meet, some people I won't. And that's fine with me, you know, long as my story is being heard. And it makes me feel good that um, even when I post it, people are engaging and they're like, they're telling me parts of their story, like on my hair page, mm -hmm. I post it. So people are engaging and like, oh my gosh, like this happened to me and people are sending me messages. So it, it lets me know that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to right. do. So are you um getting any therapy for your three years old um, or she just um have not said any more about daddy touching her anyway? No, she hasn't did any therapy. Um, my therapist would like to um incorporate the girls but she wants to get me to a certain point space as space to be able to bring us all in at the same time um my three oh she can't well she's four now but she really she really don't remember like and then i had asked her because the, the judge told me at the last um hearing like you haven't been complying with the, the supervised visit so I want you to know there will be consequences if you're not following the order because that's violation or whatever. And so um, I had to talk to my daughter about it because I didn't, I don't, I'm not going to just throw my daughter in a situation and she's like, hold up, like what's going on? So I talked to her about it. Like we were out to eat and um, I, I said, mommy got to talk to you. And she was like, what do you got to talk to me about mommy? And I was <laughs> <laughs> and now she talk like how we talk that's how she talked but she was like uh we got to talk to me about mommy i was like so you might have to like visit dawn or whatever and she was just like no she said no and i said but you don't like we don't have a choice like you have to go and she was like but i can just go to work with you mom i don't want to go no like she really don't want to go and she was thinking of all people that can like take her and i'm like she was like, well, my auntie, she could watch me. And I was like, no, he's not going to watch you. You're just going to go hang out for a little bit. What? And she was like, no. And I said, well, do you feel comfortable? And she was like, mm -mm. She was they like, can. no. And they know. They know. Yes, they do. And we, we try to um shield them or not um think that they don't know. But they do know. They understand a whole lot. They those little people, we got to give them more credit than what we do because they understand a lot. So hopefully we could get that. Hopefully you guys could get that resolved and maybe, you know, come to some conclusion where she won't have to be in that situation, you know, no more. And so, it breaks my heart that they mm -hmm. even allowing that to happen. Like, and I always use the analogy, like, it's like giving crack to a crackhead and expecting them not to smoke it. Like, how you like you giving a kid to a pedophile like that don't make sense whether it's supervised or not he could kill the, that monitor that supervised person and run off with my kids like i just don't think like the system i just feel like is is so just corrupted it just makes no sense to me none I at mean, all you know you know at the end of the day i mean you're gonna have to fight a little bit harder to make sure because it's it's guidelines out there that they could be following knowing that somebody witnessed this, like you're going to dismiss the adult, an uh, adult witnessed yep. this. So you just saying that yep. the adult, not credible. So it's just crazy. So we hope and pray that you can't get that solved and she won't even have to deal with him, you know, no longer. Yeah. So before, right. we, before we close off, do you have anything for any young lady that's now sitting down that could be watching your story and maybe in a situation what kind of suggestions or anything that you have for them? I would say always go with your first mind because your first mind is always your right mind. Don't think about when you're in a relationship, don't think about love because a lot of the times love don't have, it, it, it holds no weight. 
because if that person genuinely truly loved you they wouldn't treat you the way that they're treating you because if you think about god's love god don't do things that's gonna hurt us he does things that's gonna help us build and grow and flourish like things that feel good if it don't feel good then it ain't it ain't it ain't for you and never never be scared because that was my biggest thing never be scared to walk away don't worry about the history that y'all might have together because that's all it is is history because if it, if it transitioned at one point then it's forever gonna be what it is at that point you know what i mean it's never gonna get better because you already done it, a man is only gonna do as much as you allow him to do so you already done gave him the the mindset to think that okay if i do this she going she going to forgive it and i'm going to be able to do it again and i'm going to be able to do it again and i'm going to be able to do it. and i feel like that's what i had to realize in my relationship too like at this point he feel like i would never leave i'm going to forever be bonded to him and no i'm not you know so always follow your first mind don't when when leaving don't think about love cuz it will kind of draw you back like dang but i love this person so don't think about love um Talk to a, 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 a specialist too, because they for sure can help you like navigate those feelings and, and those emotions. Um, and never settle for anything less than what you deserve. Like you are a queen, you are a god. Like you need to be walking out here floating, walking on water, not you know, like don't don't let nobody stop you from shining because I feel like that's what it was for me. Like he seen my light and he didn't want other people to see it. So never allow anybody to 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 dim your light down. Cause you, I mean, you, you a guy, you a woman. Women rule the world. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to tell you, I want to say thank you, and we are just gonna keep hoping and praying that things change for your good. Which we know when God have His hands and things, it's gonna come to us. So you know, I want to say thank you again, and always remember, you know, that you are enough and that you matter. So before I end, <laughs> so always no, remember, I'm... always remember that. Always know that you matter. You know, time matter. You know, and if yeah. you gotta customize, just put your name, and you are enough. You are, yeah. enough. and it's crazy because I bought my daughter, my four year old, a book that's called "You Are Enough." So it's funny that you say that, and she she always read it every day. She don't know the words, but she's starting to memorize them. <laughs> so there part of the book where she say um let the people see the real you so she constantly say that and point to it and i'll be laughing but that's that was funny when you said that because she has a book called you are enough and she loves that book because she are so enough she <laughs> and she mad huh? <laughs> so i want to say thanks for um coming up on the story um coming on the show and sharing your story with us and I um want to just keep praying. We're going to keep praying that everything change. And you go out. Don't be silent. Tell everybody. You know, it may seem crazy to our parents that they just don't understand. Because back in the days, they wasn't able to speak on those kind of things. That was always whatever done in the house, it stays in the house. And that's the reason why so, so many us women and color women that we don't talk about it. Because we was raised, don't talk about what goes on in my house. So I want to thank you for breaking your silence to even talk about it. So I want to say thanks again from joining the journey back from domestic violence. And everybody, I'm your girl, Arthur Erica. Y'all have a nice day. And Ty, you keep pushing, keeping your head up, and keep moving. Thank you. <laughs>